okay, it's kind of like, you know, there's the sausage guy and then the rebel without a cause guy, you know, different Jimmy Deans. Well, this is like, it's not the 60s rock and roll American guy. This is the 2000s British singer songwriter guy. Okay. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade and I'm delighted to announce that I have already found, much sooner than I expected to, the second candidate for my recently added Now and Then feature on my channel. And for those of you who might have missed the first one, Now and Then is a very basic concept. I review two albums by the same artist, their most recent release, uh, represented by the Now portion of the title, and an album from their past, which is represented by the Then. And the subject for today's edition of Now and Then is British soul singer-songwriter James Morrison. And for now, we'll be talking about his new album, You're Stronger Than You Know. Now, James Morrison is an artist who's never been a hugely popular one in the U.S. Uh, none of his albums have ever cracked the top 20 here. Uh, his debut came the closest at number 24, uh, nor have any of his albums ever earned so much as a gold certification here either. And honestly, in my opinion, that's an injustice. Now, I came in on the proverbial ground floor with James Morrison. Uh, his first single, You Give Me Something, caught my ear right away and convinced me to buy the album it was on, Undiscovered, his debut. And that was a decision that was justified with uh, my favorite song on the album and a subsequent single, Wonderful World, whose uh, reluctantly pessimistic lyrics, as I like to describe them, I've come to identify with pretty regularly over the years. And uh, I did not hesitate to buy his sophomore album, Songs for You, Truths for Me, seeing as how I liked his first one so much. And I ended up enjoying several of its tracks as well, including Broken Strings, which is a duet with Nelly Furtado, as well as Fix the World Up For You. That's a great uh, kind of a mid-tempo ballad. And uh, probably what my favorite song on the album is, uh, Dream On Haley. That's just got a unique sound to it, a unique uh, rhythm to it. Uh, you got to check that one out. Now, unfortunately, James Morrison fell off my radar after his third album, uh, partly because I, for whatever reason, just didn't give that album as much attention as his previous one, but also because his fourth album, Higher Than Here, never got a physical re release in the States, and you know how attached I am to physical media. But a few weeks ago, I saw in the weekly email newsletter from Music Millennium, a store up in Portland that I like to uh, go to as often as possible, that he was coming out with a new album. And as soon as I saw that the first single was a duet with fellow soul singer Joss Stone, I had to hear it, and as soon as I heard it, my mind was made up to pick up the album and give James Morrison another chance. Now, longtime James Morrison fans will be delighted to know that this album is pretty much loaded from beginning to end with his trademark brand of Blue-Eyed Soul, and uh, he's still got that distinctive, raspy voice, and you know how much I like distinctive voices. Uh, his voice bears, for those of you who are unfamiliar with James Morrison, his voice bears a strong resemblance to Rod Stewart. Uh, the difference being I actually enjoy listening to James Morrison. And, okay, I don't hate Rod Stewart. I mean, he's got some good songs. It's just, for some reason, he just rubs me the wrong way, even though his voice is, as I said, quite similar to James Morrison. Uh, but anyway, uh, some of the standout moments on this album uh, include the, the very Motown-like mid-tempo number, Feels Like the First Time, that's a great one, as well as the aforementioned Joss Stone duet and first single, My Love Goes On. Then there's the gorgeous song, Slowly, which it feels like a cross between blues and gospel, with its, you know, soaring crescendos, uh, instrumental crescendos, and the little subtle little organ accents in the background. It's just, it's just a beautiful song. The track, Don't Wanna Lose You Now, brings to mind another Morrison, namely Van Morrison, uh, particularly his more recent work. And the song Glorious reminds me in the best way possible of Train's earlier hits. Uh, there's a song called I Still Need You, which kind of follows in the footsteps of the great 60s soul of Marvin Gaye and uh, Lou Rawls. And then there's Cross the Line, which has a vaguely 70s Stevie Wonder thing going on. And uh, the album closes on a delicately positive note with the optimistic song Until the Stars Go Out. That's just a, a, just a beautiful, nice ballad. And uh, as I'm suggesting, there's a lot to like on this album, as there usually is on any James Morrison album. Uh, is it his best? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I need to spend some more time with it. But you could do a heck of a lot worse than to check this one out, because I'm glad I did. 
but that was now, and this is then, The Awakening, James Morrison's third album from 2011. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I bought this release as soon as it came out, uh, because I had yet to be disappointed in a James Morrison album. But for some reason, I didn't come to fully appreciate this one until I was preparing for this video. And, and as far as I can figure, my neglect of it until this point was simply because it was his third album, and I think it's part of human nature that, with the possible exception of our absolute favorite artists, we tend to pay a little less attention to an artist with each volume of work they release. Now, my, my relative neglect of this album over the last seven and a half years is the very reason I specifically chose it for the then portion of this video, was so that I could try and re-listen to it, uh, and in doing so, I realized that it's perhaps his most dynamic album in terms of the range of moods that the various tracks cover. Uh, my favorite song, and this was actually my favorite song on the album very early on, as soon as I listened to the album for the first time, Slave to the Music is the name of the song. Now, not only is it a song about music, which is almost always a surefire hit with me, uh, but it has one of the funkiest grooves of any song ever, and certainly of any James Morrison song ever. This album also has one of his most rocking songs. It's a track called Forever. And it took me forever to, uh, to try and figure out in a way that I could convey in this video uh, what the song sounded like or, or, or who it sounded like to more to the point. But the closest I could come is to say that it's got trace elements of rockabilly and Motown in it. And you wouldn't think that those two would go together, but they do. Uh, they just work together in this song. It's a very good song. Uh, there's another track called Person I Should Have Been, and that's a ballad with uh, kind of a, a substantial Latin overtone to it. Uh, it's, it's very, very nice, very listenable. And the title track is a five minute long, understated but propulsive number that reminds me of Cat Stevens. And uh, he tries, he also tries his hand at R&B with a song called Up, which is a duet with uh, featuring a fellow R&B singer Jesse J. Then there's a song called Beautiful Life, which is this fiery, affirmatory soul stomper with some great brass flourishes. And fans of the characteristic brand of blue-eyed soul that James Morrison is known for uh, also have plenty to enjoy here, uh, specifically in the album's first single, I Won't Let You Go, and the uplifting mid-tempo anthem, One Life, that's a good one also, along with the uh, opening track, In My Dreams. It's kind of got a, like a shuffling beat to it. It's, it's, it's very nice, a, a good way to open the album. And the song Right By Your Side is a beautiful and delicate ballad with just, just two electric guitars, a rhythm guitar and a bass guitar, and an organ quietly in the background. I mean, this is just a beautiful, just a great song. What can I say? All in all, I have to say this is a much better album than I remember it being. Uh, and now, frankly, I feel rather guilty for having neglected it for as long as I did, and also for letting his subsequent release go unpurchased for so long. Uh, that is an oversight which, uh, thanks to his new album, by the way, I have since remedied. It's, it's on its way to me from an eBay seller as we speak. So yeah, if you haven't checked out James Morrison yet, I recommend him. Uh, now, which of these two albums is better, in my opinion? I have to say it's just too close to call. Um, I might have to give both of them uh, more listens. But overall though, if I were to recommend a first listen, I would probably suggest uh, his sophomore album, Songs For You, Truths For Me, uh, and or as a second choice, his debut album, Undiscovered. But uh, yeah, he's a, a great artist that, uh, in my opinion, has uh, not gotten quite an, as much attention as he should have, at least here in the States. Well, that is it for this look at James Morrison now and then. Do you have a favorite James Morrison album? Let me know in the comment section below. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.